Hi. I landed in the United States from Thailand about two weeks ago and spent my time in Marine Park, Brooklyn, New York, my hometown. And I got to see family and friends, and it was a really nice visit. Spent a little time in the city over in Manhattan as well. And what was particularly pleasing was to witness yet another New York City renaissance. They're emerging out of their terrible times from last year. I'm being haunt hunted by a gnat here because I'm no longer in the city. Because after 12 days in Brooklyn, I decided it was time to get out of town. So the way you get to Manhattan from Brooklyn, if you're a commuter, is you get on one of these babies. This is the B as in boy train, the Brighton Beach Express headed off to Manhattan. I'm actually headed out of town. I'm headed first to Manhattan to get to the Port Authority bus terminal where I will board a bus to go to Pennsylvania. One of the things I forgot about the New York City subway system is how goddamn noisy it is. I've been living in Bangkok and Singapore for the last 10 years. They have much newer, quieter systems. In defense of New York, it is a 150-year-old system and about 10 times bigger than Bangkok. But it is noisy. This is the subway complex at 42nd Street and 8th Avenue that connects with the bus terminal, the Port Authority bus terminal. All of these little symbols indicate a different train. It's a very busy exchange. And it can be a little sketchy at night. During the day, it's okay. Because there's lots of commuters coming and going. And they have a visible police presence, as you can see over here leaning against the fence. But if you're coming at night, be careful. In 1982, I was appointed to the New York City Fire Department in a company in Brooklyn. I wasn't happy there. It was a quiet company. It took me three years to get transferred to Midtown Manhattan. And I wound up here in the west side of Manhattan in Midtown. My very first high-rise fire was in this building. Back then it was known as the Holland Hotel. They rented out rooms for the night very cheaply. To say that the residents of this building were sketchy would be a vast understatement. It still doesn't look that interesting. The interesting part about this neighborhood, I am now near the intersection of 9th Avenue and West 42nd Street, is that this was never really a very good neighborhood. It used to be known as Hell's Kitchen. And the old tenements were built in the mid ninth and mid late 19th century and housed mostly Irish immigrants, laborers, many of them who worked on the construction of St. Patrick's Cathedral, but other places as well. It was also the birth, birthplace of the Irish Mafia in the United States that took root here and up in Boston, where there were many Irish immigrants as well. And these houses here, these tenement buildings were typical of many of the buildings that I responded to back in the mid 80s. I was in Ladder Company 4, a busy, very good fire company, the best in the world, I think. And what was interesting about this area is I would respond to old buildings like this. Take note of the fire escapes in the front. That tells you that there are apartments on both the front and the rear of the building, a little fire department anecdote. What means simply is that they're very crowded. And if you go eastward, you go into the fancy part of town, the high rises, the theater district, Thomas Reuters building staring back at me right now. The good, the bad, the ugly, all right here in midtown Manhattan. It was a great place to work. It was busy, it was fun, it was interesting. You want to see an interesting movie about this neighborhood. It stars Nicolas Cage. That will tell you right away that it's uh, overly dramatized. 
but it's called Bringing Out the Dead, where Nicolas Cage played an EMS guy. It was based on a true story, a memoir written by a, an EMS guy back here in this neighborhood in the mid 80s. And it really captured the nuttiness of what it was like to work here. You have the super light to spare this worthless man. Rise up! Oh I'll be begging oh my and God. start your life anew, Lord. Oh. oh, thank you, Lord. What happened? You fucking died, you stupid bastard. No. I warned you. Damn, you guys are good. But I'm not here to tell you a New York story today. I'm actually in this part of town to get to the Port Authority. That's the bus terminal on my right. I'm headed out to uh, nearby Pennsylvania to a town called Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. They named the town after an old Olympic athlete. There's a story in that as well. That, that'll be in a coming video. But actually, I'm pointing out the Port Authority building at 8th Avenue and 42nd Street. Uh, to kind of say hello to my buddy Bill back in Chiang Mai, Thailand. He has a really uh, nice YouTube channel called Unseen Thailand, Chiang Mai. And Bill is an old law enforcement guy. He was a sheriff down in Dixie, the polite southern regions of the United States. And he was up here on a trip once and he told me this story. And I think this is where he got off in this rather sketchy part of town and experienced what it was like <laughs> to be a tourist in New York in the 80s in the Hell's Kitchen. Hey, Bill. Hasn't changed much. Not a little bit. So I did find a decent place to have a little lunch here in the Port Authority building, and I got myself uh, a stromboli, which is a spinach, tomato, and cheese wrap, a little mac and cheese, and a Diet Pepsi. $17.04. Welcome to New York. Let's, let's hear you singing. I love New York. <laughs> so, tooling along from New York City to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania in Carbon County on a pretty nice bus. I'm actually uh, pleasantly pleased with this bus. It's a new nearly empty uh, trailways bus but more than that I found a little bit of Thailand and sort of I met <laughs> hello <laughs> I met Dennis Denny <laughs> and he's a uh, he's a YouTube uh, guy and he knows all about uh, guys like me from YouTube I know I meet one in person <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know far away from uh, from Thailand if you have one of these things nice to meet you About a hundred miles west of New York City, due west, you'll find yourself in a really pleasant place, the foothills of the Pocono Mountains. Well, we used to call them mountains when I, were, when I was a kid. I think they've been downgraded to hills. They're not that big, but here we are near Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful place, and it has been a place that people have come to from New York City about 100 miles away and Philadelphia as well which is about I don't know 60 miles away even closer this has always been a, uh, a magnet for people seeking to get out of town and get away from the hustle and bustle of the big city Jim Thorpe it's been a tourist destination for nearly 200 years what brings me here is my family I have a daughter and a husband and two grandchildren who live nearby here. Plus, I have a daughter and her husband and two grandchildren in Brooklyn. Now, the thing about these uh, children and grandchildren, unlike my Thailand honeys, My Brooklyn honeys are kind of camera shy. Well, I don't know if they're camera shy, but they don't want to be on YouTube. So you're not going to get to see them. But that's what drew me out here to uh, the Jim Thorpe area. 
and it's a really pleasant place. I'm going to be here for a while. Don't know exactly how long yet. Hey, a little uh, uh, travel uh, hint. If you're traveling around the States and you're going to be in one place for a while, I generally rent a car when I come here, but the price of car rentals is very high. Uh, because of the dynamics of last year, the car, the rental car company sold off a lot of their inventory to uh, produce revenue when nobody was traveling. And now all of a sudden there's a huge demand. So low supply, huge demand. The prices are through the ceiling. There's even a, an app that I normally use uh, called Turo that's kind of like an Airbnb for rental cars. And even their prices are as much as the rental car companies. And it was just crazy expensive. So I bought a bike. I'm going to be here for at least two weeks, maybe longer, for the price of two car rental days. I got myself an old Schwinn, combining exercise with transportation, and that's how I'm getting around this Jim Thorpe area. And in my next video, I'm gonna tell you the story about a town that purchased a corpse to promote themselves. And ever, if you're ever looking at a crazy ad on the media and thinking that's a little out there think about that one they literally purchased a corpse i'll tell you about that in my next video see you soon thanks for watching